I have known Fire Guy Ryan for years. And this gentleman, believe it or not, does not care for music. Except for one genre, and it is funk. We have bonded over our love for funk. I see what you're doing now. We're here to talk about ninja funk. We have the creative team. One of four announced published books. The first published books by What Not Publishing. Ryan, introduce them. Well, okay, I can do that. We have co-writers, JPG and Steve Shewitt. And we also have Rob Cannon over here. JPG, owner of Street Level Heroes and founder of That Spider-Man Booth. A dealer. I remember following you way back in the day when you were bringing, like, claw machines. Oh, my gosh. Similar to what Whatnot's doing on the con scene right now. But, like, claw machines that were filled with graded comics that people yeah. can go and try to, you know. It's not gambling, but it's like, you know, it's a, it's a fun chance yeah. to try to win something. You've been always so innovative in this space. Well, thank you. Thank you. And now you've flipped the switch and you wrote a comic book. Explain yes, did. what did we get here? Because Ninja Funk, we got a taste. And I'm titillated. <laughs> I got him. I got him. <laughs> Tell me about Ninja Funk, baby. Okay, first off, uh, Ninja Funk is written in the language of music. So with that setting, uh, the universe is off key, out of key, and the dissonant frequencies are killing the life forces throughout the universe. Ninja Funk is trying to bring the universe back to true harmony through the eternal light and they have, you know, like resistance for those that want to keep the status quo and keep things as is. And what we want, the, we want the readers to choose like who's right and who's wrong, yeah. you know, Ooh. or just choose their version of how this thing should be done. What was your thoughts about the intro? Because we both were hit with pages of this book, courtesy of the Ashcan release at Denver Fan Expo. And my jaw dropped. The art is fantastic. It's stunning. This is something that I, if I saw just as a standard previewed comic book, I would be put, adding to my bolus. Right. Yeah. The art in here, by the way, Alex Regal. Terrific Alex artwork. Regal. Alex Thank you. Too. And he works fast. Holy God. That guy, that guy's busting incredible. out pages yeah. like crazy. This comic grabbed me. Uh, this whole, this whole ash can has four different like chunks of each of the whatnot original comics that are coming out. And Ninja Funk kind of grabbed me in the specific way because it was the one that made, <laughs> this is going to sound mean, but this is the one that made the least sense to me. I really had to like read this over and over and try to like, okay, this, because it's silent. There's no you, you weren't even really reading. There, you, well, I'm looking at pictures, right? That's, yeah, that's you're interpreting sort of the pictures yeah. and it's like an apocalyptic event that we're seeing. Right, I'm trying to decipher what's happening and I think you're right. There's, there's some sort of impact happening and then you turn the page and you get this intense explosion, double page spread here that I quite like. Yeah, well, when you read the whole book, it'll, Make way more sense. Yeah. But it's the good kind of make no sense, right? Like, yeah, I need this, and I go, like, yeah. I, need, I need yeah. it to make sense. No, right? we you, want you, that. You're thirsty for an explanation now. Right. That's kind of, that's, that's your idea with the ash cans. So you're See? like, what happens? I got to buy the book. You know, that's the idea. That's the technique. So I was, I was told by AKA Mr. Bolo, also known as Shout Jack DeMeo. He said that you guys had a conversation where it just came up that you had been working on this comic book with a good friend of yours. Is that friend, Steve? This is Steve Shewitt. We actually have a DJ group we are called Ninja Funk, and we've been DJing for like 10 years, making music. And we actually have Your a DJ soundtrack. Your DJ is, <laughs> is Ninja yeah. Funk. Yes. Yeah. And there's a soundtrack. Oh. And there's a soundtrack to this. Oh, so what you're telling me, is that you are going to we live the funk out of your comic book? <laughs> exactly. Wow. I did not know that we live did that until someone told me. I was like, yeah, we got music. They're like, oh, like we live? I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Shout out we live. You guys are awesome. Killing the game, killing the game. Just super excited about doing this and like kind of, you know, creating the uh, the music and kind of putting it together with the comic. Um, I know it's not inside the uh, preview right now, but what we're doing is incorporating music and having a QR code. So when you do read it and you get to a crazy scene, you know, like that big explosion or something like that, we have some music that actually matches that vibe. And so you can just go hit the QR code, goes to Spotify or whatever platform you want, and then you can kind of get that new experience that way. How long have you guys been making music together? Man, a long time, like probably over nine, 10 years now. 
We went to the same music school together. Yeah, Icon Collective, you guys are awesome. And that's kind of where we learned the, you know, the language of music. And, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, JPG's like background in comics and my background in, you know, music growing up and living, I'm originally from Alaska. Um, and that's kind of how I created the, uh, the Laser Wolf character. Um, and just like different, you know, aspects of things in my life and his life um, from his cat, which is Wolfgang right there. Shout out Wolfgang. Oh, it's your cat yeah, that you put cat. into yeah. your comic. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Wolfgang like is that. awesome. And so just like, uh, you know, things like when we would DJ and practice before a show, like Wolfgang would go under the table, like by the speakers and it would be like super loud. And he'd be like, like he wouldn't want to leave, but he'd put his like paws over his head like this. And just be like, ah, I just want to like, you know, hang out with you guys. And I'm like, this guy's like a comic book character, you know. So that kind of just, you know, one thing led to another. Our tagline that we would have, um, especially when we play shows, is, uh, you know, we're here to save the universe from bad music. We even had like these glasses where we would like make and connect them to uh, like a headband. And uh, we kind of, you know, turned ourselves into like, you know, like superheroes per se. And, uh, and I've always been obsessed with like ninjas, you know, growing up. You know, I was a, a ninja for Halloween like seven years in a row. And my mom was just, you know, like this kid is outrageous right now. <laughs> what is he thinking? You know? Wow. So we got two DJs causing a ruckus. You got a cat who is probably doing what Butch Sounds does like Butch. on the show. Yeah, that's exactly you what know, I was thinking. It's kind of becomes a third member. I imagine the editor of this team has to like play a pretty damn big role to keep this all organized and fluid. Rob, is that he what you is come amazing in? first yeah. off? Yeah. So how it kind of happened was weird. Like when, when Kevin, obviously this book wasn't whipped out in the past eight months. So we've been kind of working on this deal, the artwork and uh, a lot of the preexisting uh, writing was there already. And so when Jack brought this to Kevin, Kevin was like, okay, we need to have this in our, in our, premiere lineup. I'm like, okay, cool. And I looked at the artwork. I'm like, that's awesome. And I, I, I've always been real gentle about this, you know, because the, the guy knows what a good comic book is. Like he's been in the space for a long time. He knows what makes a great comic book. But we look at this book in, in the state that it was when they brought it to us. And we're like, this is like a diamond in the rough. We got to, we got to chip off some edges and, and I'm helping JPG get his tool set together. Cause I've, I've been making comic books in the indie space for like over 10 years, very long time books you've never heard of before. But, um, you know, that's given me the experience to kind of like have the instincts to look at what's going on and go, okay, how can we improve this? Because like the stuff that's there that's under the surface is fantastic. I love it. There's like this crazy psychedelic pseudo-religious thing going on. And like, you can see the artwork. This is why we chose these pages, right? The expressiveness of the artwork and, and the amount of action in those pages on top of the content being like, what the hell's going on? There's this huge event is like, it's a hype tool, right? So, um, and I think e these are the pages that we're we're going to take out one of those and, and yeah. be expanded. So the content in the final book is going to be a little different from that, it, but like in a good way. It kind of makes it clearer what's happening visually, so we don't have to rely on narration and dialogue. It's so. like a movie trailer, like where they show you shit. <laughs> right. That's yeah. not actually going to be in the comic book. And they always say, uh, I always couple, say, one of the pages. At least, uh, Kevin, Kevin's talked with, with me about this too, is, um, you know, you can always tell if a movie's going to be bad if they show too much of it in the trailer. And so this is kind of a way of us just like, yeah, you like this, don't you? You want to see more? <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of making a statement. No, so a little knowing bit. this info drop about all this in this book that we would not have been able to figure out with the pages. What are your thoughts now? I right? almost feel like. Like gross that that worked on me. <laughs> <laughs> they got me with this fake, they got this you. fake extra pages and stuff in here. It's not fake though. You like know? the content's going to be there. Like the things still happen the same way. It's just going to be like more expanded upon. Excellent. You know? So question though, is the, is the whole issue going to be silent? No. Okay. No. And, um, that, that part of that is because we're like reworking the dialogue and like, there's a there's just so much going on visually that you can tell pretty much what's happening, you know, in the grand scheme of things just by the artwork alone. So we felt comfortable doing that. I get the sense from this page in particular that maybe something is happening here that like is super loud and they can't be heard anyway. Uh, right? That like, yeah, maybe? sure. Okay. Yeah, cuz I don't know what's happening in this image. It looks like some kind of energy is being shot out of whatever's floating up above them. Looks like it's a house or something that's about to collide with a planet. Right? That's part, I don't part know. of the fun of reading a silent at least a silent, you know, two uh, two four pages like this. It's gotta, pretty, it's pretty it fun. I can't wait. I can't wait for you guys to actually see what all that stuff is. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a really fun issue. Can we talk about David Mack? Oh. How does it feel to have a David Mack cover on your cover A? Oh, man, it was a dream. When I got I acquired him, uh, he didn't even know how happy it was. <laughs> I was just <laughs> like, I was like, he's like, oh, he said yes. I was like, okay, thank you, sir. 
<laughs> I should have seen Ryan's face when he saw that you had David Mack on A little on bit of cover. a fanboy, yeah. I know he no. likes to draw cats in particular. I've, I've seen a lot of that on his Instagram. So I was like, seeing this cover, it, it pops. I love that the cat kind of takes up most of the artwork there. Right? So, yeah, but it's awesome. Oh, you know what? Actually, this is I, what I meant to say is on the ash can. I'm not sure if this is cover A, but uh, maybe you can tell us if the cat's going to be on cover A. Yeah, that's going to be cover A. Oh, this is yeah. the, that's the, the, the determining cover. Wow. Starting out with David Mack on issue number one. Um, what was it like yesterday being on the Whatnot stage in Denver Fan Expo with the whole crew? Did it start to feel real? Well, that was such an incredible moment, like Jack um, from Whatnot was talking about, you know, making these moments for people and making moments like in comic book history. And that really felt like a moment to me, at least. How about you? Oh, man. I mean, yeah. Standing next to David Mack, opening these boxes and pulling out. Because, like, we had never seen me and Kevin and Michael were all kind of standing around going, like, well, I hope they look good. And, like, Jack <laughs> made a comment, like, wouldn't that be the saddest video ever if, like, they looked like shit? And so we're just, like, <laughs> standing around these boxes opening with our hearts pounding. And then they, they're they beautiful. Like, they're so wow. – I couldn't have imagined how they, them looking this good in my imagination. Like, it's it was – yeah, it was huge. All right. So we have – Ninja Funk debuting. It's going to be the second title coming out this year. Big congratulations to the three of you and everyone else who's part of this creative team. I know it's a, probably a lot even more than that, whether from inspiration to actually the work on the title. You know, is this the only book that you guys have thought about making? I mean, you guys have been doing the music for a long time together, it sounds like. Are there any other things cooking? I mean, I don't want to give anything away. I'll leave it up to JPG. <laughs> Well, we want this. This is world building for us, and we have world building years, uh, years from today. So, like, we have like an outline for it. So, we want to expand this world uh, and just make it like something for everybody and every single like story but arc that we have. Well, I'm really digging yeah. this like interactive aspect to it, which also is going to make it a standout because we have uh, some pretty unique titles. I mean, don't you feel like Ryan? All four of these yeah. comics are vastly different than one another, but they all have a very likable quality. They do. I was kind of worried when I got this ash can that like maybe one of them would be like, mm. <laughs> yeah, they, they were here to cover <laughs> this and we would be honest, like, hey, I'm not really vibing with this one, who exactly. knows, but. But no, they, they all stick out. I remember them all very clearly, which if you know me, you know I have horrible memory <laughs> issues. So like the fact that I can go like, oh yeah, Alpha Beta, this is awesome. I'm looking forward to Ninja Funk. Like Exile even looks cool to me. You know, I'm excited. There we go. And, and shout out Quested too, JPG. Steve, Rob, thank you so much. Big congratulations. I'm excited to see the output you're about to do. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot, man. It's been awesome. Thank you. This book has hit 20 bucks. Let off the gas. Colin Fan, unless you're really gunning for some Jack for the goodness. $75 cover price on this. Don't overbid. But if somebody wants it, we got it. 